There we go. What's going on guys, it's your boy Ogosh, and today I am going to show you guys how to create a template inside of FL Studio. So creating a template for me has made life easier for me to track out uh, beats and instrumentals or whatever I'm creating. Um, you don't need to do this because FL Studio has a lot of ways for you to organize inside of here, but I like to organize as I go. Um, just so I can like, if I want to put effects on something, I know where like my kick is going to be or my, my piano or whatever I'm using. I, I already have everything organized as I go. Um, right now I have a template loaded up as you can see. I'm going to uh, start from scratch just so you guys can see the process of how, you, how to make it. And there's all kinds of ways you can make it. Like you can even have a template saved to where you have your drums already loaded in there. You can have your plugins loaded in there. Um, and so every time you open up FL Studio, your template, your template pops up and you can, you know, just create and do your thing. Me personally, I don't like to, um, I don't like to have uh, sounds already loaded into my template only because you, don't, you never know what you're in the vibe for. Um, you never know, you know, and I feel like even when you do do that, you're gonna always trying to, you know, you're gonna always create the same thing. And that's not what we want to do here. We want to be able to, you know, just be organized. That's that's the point of a template is just to be organized. So I mean, you, I guess you could get, you could make a template for a certain type of beats if you want to have like your trap template and have your trap drums loaded up and have like Omnisphere or whatever you like to use for trap beats, and to have a template for like your dance beats and have like you know, you know, your your, uh, you know, your, your dance drums, your dance style drums, and you know. And so on and so forth. You can do that, but I, me personally, I don't do that. I just like to have a template just so I can organize on the go. So let me show you guys how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to file. Um, so to start from scratch, go to new. So right, right now I have my template loaded up right here. So every time I hit new, it's gonna go ahead and look like that. It's not gonna load up because I already have it loaded up. So new from template, go to minimal, and I'm gonna go to empty. So there you go. Nothing's on the uh, master. Nothing's on the inserts. Everything is just completely blank. Okay, so um, and then same thing with the channel rack. Nothing's on the channel rack at all. So what I like to do, I like to have my drums on the left side of the mixture, and then I have my music on the right side. And if I do do vocals in um, FL, which is very rare, I, I do all my vocals in Pro Tools, which I will do a temp. Uh, I'm sorry, I will do a video on one day. Um, and I, but anywho, I do my vocals on the right side, like all the way to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select insert one through 25, right? And in order for you to do that, let me do that again. So you're gonna double click the insert and hold the second click and then drag your, your mouse over or the cursor over. And then you'll be able to select it. And then let go of the mouse and you're good to go. So in order to color them, what you're gonna do is, is hold, so for Mac, you could hold FN and then F2. I think for win, for uh, for PC, you just hit F2 and you're able to do it. And then you're not gonna name anything yet, you're just gonna color it. So you're gonna choose a color of your choice. For me, I'm gonna do like this this peach color. Choose it and you're gonna hit enter. So blam, you have your tracks colored. All right, then for the music side, I'm gonna go ahead and choose insert 26 to, let's do 50. Right, and you can do the same thing, hold for Mac, like I said, FN, F2. I'm gonna change that color to like, let's do, uh, let's do like a, like a green. Okay, cool. Okay, so another cool thing that you can do to make this look a little bit more organized, so you can right click the, uh, so right here, I'm gonna right click insert 26, and then I'm gonna uh, click the separator button right here and it'll put a separator between uh, the insert 25 and 26, just to separate those tracks. So it looks a little bit more, more organized. You know that this is, you know, drums, and this is gonna be music on the right side. And what you can do is the same thing, like I'm gonna click insert 51, or right click it, and then gonna hit separator. Bam, now you have that all, you know, separated. All right, so now, even though I do have all this organized, you can't really tell what it is because it all still says insert. Um, I, I, what I like to do, like I said, my drums on the left side. So I use, I usually, or every time I put my kick on insert one. So what you can do is you can either right click it and hit rename, or you can hit uh, F2, or you can just hold shift and click the insert and you're able to rename it. So I'm gonna name this first insert kick and I'm gonna name insert two 
808 and like i said this is a preference thing you don't have to do kick 808 and then so on and so forth this is just how i like to have my stuff named All right so i'm gonna do snare i'm gonna do clap i'm gonna do hi-hats um open hi-hats i'm gonna do percussion i'm gonna just call it perk and then there you have it. I usually just leave those open because you never know what you're gonna use for the other tracks. But most of the time when I'm making beats, that's what I'm using. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it set up to where the, the kick is gonna always side chain with the 808. So I'm gonna go ahead and have the kick track selected and then I'm gonna right click, descend and hit side chain to this track. All right, and then what we're gonna do is, is go to the 808 track and then open up Fruity Limiter. And then we go to the compression side. I'm gonna set the side chain number to one because that's where the, the kick is at. And then if you want to, you can set the, the parameters how you want. I'm just gonna just turn them up just a tad just so I already know that it's, you know, it's ready being uh, affected, the side chain. And then everything else I just kind of leave open. I don't really put plugins on, on the, the tracks too much um, just so I can, you know, you know, just edit accordingly is depending on what the track what, what type of track it is all right so all right next thing i'm gonna do so i'm gonna choose two random uh inserts it doesn't matter actually i'm just gonna go ahead and choose like 52 and 53. i'm gonna right click them and i'm gonna hit dot two right so now you're gonna have the tracks over here on the right hand side that, so you'll always see them no matter where you're at on the uh the mixture so if you even have your mixture like if you have like a small laptop and your mixer looks like this you're gonna always be able to see those tracks and the right, main reason why we're doing this is because we're going to use those as buses for the music and the drums. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select all the drums. Well, if I, actually, before I do that, I'm going to name these tracks. So I'm going to name this one Drum Bus. And I'm going to name the next, the other one, Music. I can't spell Music Bus. Blam. All right. So now that I have those named, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these tracks. And I'm going to right click the send on the, the drum bus and hit route to this track only. So the reason why you want to hit route to this track only is, uh, instead of route to this track, is because if you route to that, so let's say if I take this music track and route to the music one, um, it's going to be routed to both the master track and the music bus. You don't want to have that because you're going to be getting two signals sent to both tracks and you don't, you don't need that. So what you're going to do is, like I said, select all the tracks that you want. Um, and then send it to where you need to. In this case, I'm sending all my green, which is gonna be the music tracks, to the music bus. Route to this track only. So now every time you see, select the track, you'll see at the bottom here, they're always gonna be sending to the music. And then same thing for the drum bus, they'll always be sent to the, uh, I'm sorry, all the drum tracks could all be sent to the drum bus. And to make it look look even more you know, efficient, you can just go ahead and right, um, Hold shift, click it, and then choose the same color that you had the uh, the, the music, sorry, the drum bus, and then the same thing for the music bus. And they're already be preset once you start that process. So there you have it. I have that so far. So as far as the master track, it's a that's a preference thing. For me, I like to start off with just having the soft clipper on the master. <clears throat> it, soft clipper is such a cheat code with FL Studio. I don't know why it works so so powerful. Like I don't know why I don't know why a soft clipper is so powerful, and it lets you get, you know, the output that you want when you're making like punchy drums and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll also put actually I'll put that like on slot iron. It doesn't matter where you put it. That's just my preference. And I'm gonna do fr uh, fruity balance, and I'm gonna turn it up like maybe one dB. But that's a preference thing as well. You don't have to do that. Um, and then later on, once I'm like really getting into the mix of the beat, then I'll just go ahead and go crazy with my master track. Um, I like to use Slate Digital, uh, Slate Digital FGX, but I'll just have it turned off for the time being because you know I don't I don't I don't need it yet. Another thing I like to do um, is have so if you have a beat tag, um, sometimes you know without a preset you forget to put your tag on the beat. So I'm gonna go ahead and select another track and dock it to the right as well. And I'm just gonna name it. For me, obviously, it's gonna be Oh Gosh Tag. And I'm gonna go ahead and color that like. And you can choose colors too. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna just name, put this in black. 
there you go and then you can go wherever your tag is at for me i just have it in my hard drive and then uh let's see so what you do is you just drag it in oh god just drag it in and then right now this is just a, the the dry oh gosh my dry tag so i can what well, has reverb on it but i'm going to affect it somewhere so i don't like the the stuff in the beginning um so just so you can so if you have a tag that doesn't have effects on it you can always have it preset it on the, on the template all right guys so that's how you create a template in fl um super simple uh super easy to look at and understand what's going on um but i'm going to show you guys where you should save it and how you can open it up every time you open up fl so you don't have to keep selecting it in your uh template directory so what you're going to do is go to file save as so mind you i'm going to be saving this on a mac so it's going to be a little bit different than pc but once you start seeing the files for fl you understand on pc side it's going to be the same the same thing uh, so on Mac, you're going to go to Applications, and you're going to go to the drop-down for an FL Studio, and go to contact, uh, Contents, and then you're going to go to, is it Resources? Yeah, Resources, and you go to FL, you go to Data, then you go to Templates, and you want to save it in Minimal, and you can name it whatever. So this is what I'm going to name it, oh gosh, Temp 2020, yeah, 2020. Point two, because I already have one. Um, and you're gonna hit save. So now that you have it saved, what you want to do is so that it opens up every time you open up FL. You're gonna go to option, and you're gonna go to general, and then you're going to go to default template. And oh, first, okay. So it's not in my directory yet for templates. So you gotta close FL Studio first, then open it back up. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Then, <laughs> I forgot about that. And then you're gonna go to gonna go ahead and uh, so as you can see, it's gonna be in your your directory for templates. But when you select it, it's gonna open up the template that you created. But it's not gonna open up every time. So what you wanna do is go to options, go to general settings, and then you need to go to the bottom right here where it says default templates, and you're gonna choose that template. So anytime you close FL Studio, I'm gonna show you guys right now. Close it, open it. And there you have it. The template opens up every time. And that's it. There you have it. That's how you create the template. That's how you save it. Uh, that's where you save it in the minimal folder for the templates in your FL Studio directory. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I will be dropping more content soon. Um, if you guys have any questions ab about how to uh, make a template or anything that I explained, just go ahead and comment down below. If you guys have any questions for future videos, go ahead and comment down below. Yeah, just keep me posted. Let me know what's up. I'll see you guys next time.